I think that the challenge is simply to get finance to do the job that it was set up to do. And that is to take money from point A where it is to point B where it's needed. And I think we can see in this landscape uh, uh, discussion, uh, there's a lot of money that is needed and it's really needed. This is terribly important stuff for the sustainability of uh, societies, the environment and indeed financially as well. So money ought to be moving. Um, the qu and, and there's lots of money there. Yeah, I mean, tw 225 trillion or whatever the number is. The question is, how do we find the vehicles to get some of those private capital flows to start moving? And th this is a journey that we're on. There isn't, I think, one solution to this. Uh, we were talking about a roadmap of something that you could do, but actually I think there are many different starting points and very many different destinations on the roadmap. The question is, how do you make the roads uh, as clear and, of course, the vehicles as environmentally sound as they can possibly be? So I think the English phrase, uh, horses for courses, so private finance will should be should be backfilling on those things that are kind of the easy things to do, uh, the ones where there is an the, where you can see where the profit is because of course most of our financial institutions are there because people have saved because they want a pension or they want life insurance or whatever, but if you could manage to start that process with um, a little bit of support, only a little bit of support for introducing um, private finance to uh, uh, landscape finance. That would seem like a sensible thing to do. One of the things I've been really quite impressed by, I'm, I'm not a, a, a landscapes person, but I have been involved in environmental finance. But one of the things I've been quite impressed by is the growth in the green bonds market. I mean, this has grown maybe 10, 20 times in the last three, four years. And it's because we've got a model. And it's not perfect, and there's lots of things you can criticize it for, but the 10, 20 times growth is, is quite spectacular. Imagine we could do the same in terms of the regeneration of the landscape of the world. Uh, we could do the same in terms of making sure that our forests are not de degraded. It's, it's really difficult. I mean, we had a whole morning about what are all the difficulties. I mean, uh, first of all, the benefits that you get from this aren't just private benefits, they're public benefits as well. And secondly, who is it that you're going to put in the room to sit down and agree when you've got to deal with the water table, you've got to deal with communities, you've got to deal with uh, global environmental problems, uh, uh, you've got to deal with all sorts of different knock-on effects, you've got a number of uh, uh, countries that are properly saying, look, w w w the critical thing for us is that we get our people out of poverty. How is it that you manage to trade off all of those things? And, and for, 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 for myself, I would say, look, you probably can do this, but sometimes you're going to have to be pragmatic about this. You won't be able to get everything perfect all of the time. But if we can get a journey where well-intentioned people, including well-intentioned people from finance, but not just well-intentioned people fi f f from, from finance by any means, if we can manage to get that forward, then maybe we can get finance to do its proper purpose, which is, as I say, is to take money from point A where it is to point B where it's needed. There's plenty of money in the world. It's just not being invested in the things that we need it to be for a sustainable planet for the next few generations.